This video is an overview of the installation process for the Viking Range 7 Series Integrated Bottom Freezer Refrigerator. Your safety and the safety of others is very important. Please take a moment to read through the various warnings and dangers associated with this installation process. Your unit is shipped with the power switch on. The power switch is located at the top left of the unit behind the access panel. It is used to turn the power off when cleaning or servicing the refrigerator. Measure the cutout dimensions carefully to ensure a proper fit. The height should be a minimum of 84 and 3 16 inches and a maximum of 85 and 3 16 inches. The cutout width should be 36 inches and the depth should be 25 inches. A minimum of 3 inches of finished surface from the front of the cutout is required. The electrical outlet location can be on either side of the rear wall, but must be within 4 and 1 fourth inches from the top and 15 and 1 half inches from the side. The water line entry should be located on the bottom of the rear wall within the area shown. Ensure the floor substructure will support the weight of the unit, which is approximately 1,200 pounds. The appliance is equipped with a three-prong grounding plug, a 115-volt, 60 Hz, 15-amp fused electrical supply is required. It is also required that a separate circuit serving only this appliance be provided. The water supply line requirements are shown here. The location of the anti-tip bracket must be centered on the back wall. The vertical location of the bracket, dimension A, should be equal to the cabinet height opening minus 85 and a quarter inches, which is the refrigerator height of 84 inches plus one and a quarter inches. Attach the anti-tip bracket to the wall using the applicable screws to hold the refrigerator from tipping. A minimum of four screws must be attached to the wall studs. Optional custom front panels must be dry, solid, and straight one-piece panels. Panel weights should not exceed 39 pounds for the refrigerator door panel, 10 pounds for the top freezer drawer panel, and 13 pounds for the bottom freezer drawer panel. Dimensions for custom panels are shown here. The hole locations for custom panels are shown here. There are mounting holes on the inside of each door and drawer. To access the mounting holes for custom panels, unsnap the panel trim on both sides of each door panel. Ensure that you have approximately 6 feet of 1 quarter inch copper tubing available on the right rear side of the refrigerator. Open the bottom freezer drawer and use a flathead screwdriver to remove the clips on the drawer slides. Slightly lift and slide the drawer out to remove. Loosen the toe kick screws and remove the toe kick by sliding upward through the keyhole. Remove the access panel screws and pull out the panel. It is secured by two clips at the top. Remove the flush mount side trim taped to the side of the unit. Position the refrigerator in front of the cutout and insert the copper line through the grommet opening in the rear corner. Feed the copper line through the compartment until it reaches the front of the refrigerator. Some units may come with a one foot long flexible tube already attached to the water valve. Add the copper line to this end or add the shutoff valve at this junction as an option. If the water shutoff is located in the wall directly behind the refrigerator, the shutoff supplied with the refrigerator should be installed on the water supply line. Allow space for the coiled loop prior to the refrigerator being rolled into the cutout. Roll the refrigerator into the cutout. Flush out at least two quarts of water through the copper line before attaching to the water valve. Coil the copper line in a loop 
so that the end faces toward the rear of the refrigerator. Insert the end of the copper line into the water valve. Tighten the nut until the ferrule fits snug on the copper line. Turn on the water supply. Check for leaks at all connection points and repair as necessary. Flush the system by dispensing two or three glasses of water. Once the refrigerator is in position, level the unit to the floor using the 5 16 inch hex nut. Use the lowest torque setting when using a drill. Each leg can be raised by rotating the hex nut clockwise or lowered by rotating the hex nut counterclockwise. The unit must be level and plumb for proper door operation, fit and finish. After the refrigerator has been leveled, reattach the toe kick. Replace the drawers and drawer slide clips and close the door. The drawer and drawer panels can be adjusted on the side of each panel. At the top and bottom of each panel, there is a vertical slot and cam spacer for front-to-back adjustment. In the center, there is a horizontal slot and cam spacer for up and down adjustment. To make adjustments, first loosen the mounting bolts, adjust the cam spacers as needed, and then re-tighten the mounting bolts. Open and close the doors and drawers to make sure none of the moving components interfere with surrounding cabinets. Ensure that there are even gaps across the front and sides of the unit. To attach the refrigerator to the side trim, open the door and remove the drawers. Using the flat wood screws, fasten the unit to the cabinetry on both sides. Only use the screws provided and use caution when installing the fastening screws to prevent scratching the frame. Snap the flush mount side trim to the side opposite door swing. This should provide a finished look on the handle side. Replace the drawers and drawer slide clips and close the door. Verify your unit is operating after installation. When the unit is first plugged in, the display will flash PL. Press the Refrigerator Select button twice to initiate. If the unit is in Sabbath mode, the interior lights, display, and alarm will be disabled. To exit the Sabbath mode, press and hold the Sabbath key for three seconds. If the unit is in Showroom mode, the refrigerator system will be disabled, but all other functions will operate. To enter Showroom mode, Press and hold the vacation and alarm keys simultaneously for three seconds. Repeat this process to exit the showroom mode. For more detailed installation information, refer to your printed instructions.